Have you got your archaeologist hat ready? In this third lesson, you'll learn about the lives of children during the 1800s. How did they learn? How did they play? How were the lives of these children similar to your life? And how were their lives different? Well, archaeologists, I think you're ready to start your adventure. Now I'll let my friend Ryan take it away. Hi, everyone. Welcome to our third lesson of Long Go Long Beach Online. My name is Ryan. In our previous lesson, we talked about some of the workers who worked on the ranch and so the types of work that they did. Today, we're going to be learning about the kids and what they did at Rancho Los Cerritos. And the two people we'll be talking about today are Harry and Sarah Bigsby. Sarah grew up in Los Angeles and there was enough children around there that they were able to go to a schoolhouse. Harry Bigsby, her cousin, grew up right here at Rancho Los Cerritos. And there was enough kids to create a school, so Harry learned right here. And today we're going to be learning how they learned to read and write and also in some of the games that they played. Just like how you have your games at home, either tag or your video games, Harry and Sarah had their games as well. And this game is called Hunt the Ring. As you can see right here in my left hand, there's this tiny ring. And we're gonna pass, they pass along this rope with someone standing in the middle. And that person in the middle, they had to have their eyes closed while everyone around the outside of the circle passes this ring around. Hence the name, it's called Hunt the Ring. So now we have our video games, our games such as kickball or sports. This is one of the oldest forms of entertainment that Harry and Sarah had to play. First activity, we're going to be reading about Harry Bixby on page 10. And just like you guys at home, Harry read books, but it's not a traditional book. This is called, known as McGuffey's Reader, which is like our textbooks today. And in this, we have our alphabet and also some stories. This was like their textbook a long time ago. So with this alphabet, Harry would practice writing on a chalkboard just like this. Maybe his mother would use a little fancier form of writing, like this feather pen. But a chalkboard was very important a long time ago because if we made a mistake or if we needed to redo something, we could easily use our cow skin as our eraser, erase it, and we could always rewrite a word. Because a long time ago, like how we have our books, paper was very hard to come by. So to get practice writing, or Harry Bigsby wanted to practice his cursive, he would use this slate to practice either writing the word rancho or any words. So on page 11, and on this page we have an alphabet and cursive right here, and this alphabet is straight from McGuffey's Reader. So we're going to be using the same resource that Harry Bigsby himself used to practice our cursive. So in these open lines, the very top, we already have an example for you, it's the word rancho. And you can see it starts with a capital R and then goes into the lowercase. Similar to up here with our alphabet, all the uppercase cursive letters are at the top and all the lower ones are right there at the bottom. So I want you all to practice either try writing your name, writing your mom's name, or your dad's name. But also, if you have a chalkboard, a long time ago it's also known as a slate. If you have a slate and chalk, try practicing with the slate and the chalk first and then move into your book and try using a pen. We want to try using a slate because we want to see what it was like to practice cursive, just like how Harry Bigsby had to write in cursive with chalk. I want you all to see what it's like to use it.
This is Harry Bixby's room. Harry was one of Jotham and Margaret's sons. He slept in this beautiful bed, but he had lots of time to play outside, and one of his favorite pastimes was collecting bird's nests. He also went outside to play with kites and went fishing in the rivers. He also had a lot of toys to play inside. Things like Chinese checkers or puzzles, dominoes, even fun metal toys that were made from iron. These are horses and buggies. But it wasn't all fun and games. He also had to go to school. There was no schoolhouse in Long Beach, so he learned from home. Here is his desk. He used a slate and chalk instead of paper and pen and read from a book called McGuffey's Reader. next part of our lesson, we're going to be learning about Sarah Bigsby. Sarah Bigsby, she grew up in Los Angeles, but she would frequently visit Rancho Los Cerritos. And Sarah Bigsby, she grew up to be a writer. You can even check out one of these books at your local library. It's called Adobe Days, and it's written by Sarah Bigsby. It has a history about Rancho Los Cerritos. So, with the writing, she also wrote poems about Rancho Los Cerritos. And we're going to get to do a poem about the garden. This poem is called Don Juan's Garden, in reference to John Temple. In this game, we have our rhyming words at the bottom, and we're going to fill in these blanks at the top. So with these words, they're in pairs. So we have anywhere there, oil soil, horn born, and the word horn that's in reference to the Horn of South America, so that's a location. That's why the H is capitalized. And the last set, two and grew. So those sets of words are going to match up here. A few other words that are annoying here, or a few other words that you might not understand, but I'm going to explain, are Don Juan. So that's in reference to Mr. Temple. The Mesa, that is really just like land. And acres, that's pretty much a measurement of how much land you have. If you go down to the corridor, the corridor is like a hallway or a walkway. That's what a corridor is. And one more is cypress. Cypress is a tree. So there's some words you might not recognize, but hopefully that explanation will help. So what you're going to do is fill in the blanks with the rhyming words below. Did you know Sarah Bixby wrote many more poems than this one? These books are full of poems that she wrote throughout her life. Have you finished your poem activity? Here is Don Juan's garden as it was originally written. Don Juan built a garden miles from anywhere, fenced in from the mesa four wide acres there. To mark off beds and pathways, he brought brick around the horn. And there behind his 10-foot fence, a rare garden was born. Two lemon trees he planted, and pomegranates too. 
and close beside the corridor, a dozen oranges grew. He planted gray-green olives to meet his need for oil, and cypress out of Italy in his adobe soil. Sarah Bixby wrote many of her poems about her memories of Rancho Los Cerritos. One of the rooms where Sarah and her family spent a lot of time was the parlor. In our next segment, see if you can spot something you learned about in a previous lesson on the table. The parlor was where the Bixby family spent time together after dinner. The parlor is most like our living rooms or family rooms today. In this room, you'll see all of the fun things that the family did together. For example, they played games like cribbage. They listened to music. One of their cousins played the fiddle. Sarah had a doll named Elizabeth that she brought every time she visited the rancho. And just like today, we have a family album. Here is a photo of all of the Hathaway sisters. Did you guess the stereoscope? Ryan showed you in lesson one how this technology helped people like the Bixby's see pictures in three dimensions. The stereograph card that is in the stereoscope now is a photograph from the rancho, but you could also buy stereograph cards of far off places and events that you couldn't see in person. These might be the pyramids in Egypt, Yosemite National Park, or something like this card. Do you recognize this piece of a very famous statue in the United States? So today we learned a little about Harry and Sarah Bigsby. Now if you have stories or poems that you wrote at home with your parents, with your parents' permission, please share them or upload them to your social media. And please make sure to tag at Rancho Los Cerritos so we can share them with our page. Thank you. Thanks, Ryan. I'm sure all of you archaeologists can't wait for your next adventure. Until next time.